Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church in Goshen. I'm Bill Powers, and we'll be helping to lead worship this morning. It's great to see all of you here this morning, and also those who are worshiping with us online. There are just a few announcements um, to make you aware of in the life of the con congregation. Today, there will be a brief uh, worship and music committee meeting following worship here in the sanctuary. On Monday, April 8th, there'll be a PNC meeting, which is 7.30 p.m., uh, which is a virtual meeting. Tuesday, there'll be outreach fellowship committee meeting, 7.30 p.m. in the parlor. And uh, Thursday is choir rehearsal, 7.30 p.m. Please speak to Jonathan Hall if you're interested in joining the choir. We're always happy to have additional voices join us. And next Sunday, uh, April 14th, there'll be a deacon's meeting, 10.30 a.m. in the Bradner Room. Also, just want to make you aware of uh, the Noontime uh, concert series is, has uh, started again, so please, if you're available, uh, Tuesday, 12.15 to 12.45, come here with great music in a great space and bring your friends. And um, also, uh, Friday night friends, there'll be a meeting on Friday, April 12th in Fellowship Hall. Registration is at 5.30 p.m. and uh, program begins at 6 p.m. Also, uh, if you need pastoral care during this time, uh, John Redman is our contact and his information is listed in the bulletin. And are there any other announcements? Please come forward. Good morning, George Hankins, Chair of the Mission Committee. All right, we'd like to thank all of those who are here today who came to our fish fry on Friday night. And we'd like to especially thank um, the Outreach Committee, Michael Coyne, who nudged us one step closer into the 21st century with letting us um, buy uh, reservations prior to the uh, dinner on Friday evening online. So it's the first time for us. And to our resident uh, graphics designer, graphics artist, uh, Natalie, who did a, a, some terrific job on the posters and the like that you may have seen around. A, a special shout out to uh, the deacons who did most of the grunt work of setting up and preparing and uh, moving the food from one place to another. And for the uh, high school out or interact group, I believe it is, uh, who helped to instill in me once again why I went into teaching and, and what the next generation is going to be like. And if they're like these kids, we're set. Uh, just to let you, give you an idea, um, Sue was uh, calculating and she thinks that the exact number was $1,823.50 that we earned to send out to um, Presby Build and to the um, Han um, Habitat for Humanity for the Greater Newburgh. Uh, good morning, I'm Brian Meek. I'm uh, the silent member of property management. Uh, today's uh, coffee hour is uh, sponsored by uh, property management, so please come up and enjoy. Um, also, if you get a chance, please uh, see Mr. Kopech, Jody Kopech, who is the head of property management. He is looking for volunteers, and if you're a little handy, and you want to help change light bulbs and uh, things of that nature, uh, please come and see us. Thanks. I'm Mary from Fellowship, Mary Kopeck, and I just want to remind everyone that we do have plenty more uh, Sunday coffee hours to sign up for. Um, if anybody feels the urge to put out a nice little spread of just munchy things and coffee, um, we're always there to help you set it up and we would really appreciate some names on that chart. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mary. And I just, I have one special announcement this morning. I'd like to have Margaret Dickover, please come forward. You 
you may be wondering why I have a balloon and flower up here. <laughs> and Margaret, if you join me up here for just a moment. Um, as you know, Margaret has been a member of the Worship and Music Committee for how many years? <laughs> okay, more, more years than we know, um, and has been an instrumental member of the committee, um, adding greatly to the, the life and vibrancy of the congregation, the worship that we have here. And um, as many of you know, Margaret is transitioning She'll be moving, retiring, and <laughs> moving upstate and also to Florida as well. And so we'll be sort of relinquish, relinquishing her role with the Worship and Music Committee. And the committee wanted just to take a moment to thank you for all of your contributions and to give you a small token of our thanks. grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let's worship God. Please join me in our responsive call to worship. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and also with you. Let us worship God. May the Lord's name be praised as we share in our opening prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love and your worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand if you're able and join in our opening hymn, Hymn 245, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, Hymn 245.
please be seated. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. In faith and penitence, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Together. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Friends, anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone a new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. <laughs> Before we read from the Bible, we pray that the Holy Spirit will help us to hear what God is saying to us and to do what God is calling us to do as followers of Jesus Christ. Let us prepare ourselves to hear God's word. Let us pray together. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The first scripture reading this morning is from 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through chapter 2, verse 2, and can be found in the New Testament in the Pew Bible on page 238. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked and looked at and touched with our hands 
concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that the God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is that and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but for also the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you're able for the reading of the gospel. Gospel reading today is from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31, and can be found in the Pew Bible, New Testament, page 115. Listen for the word of God. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not yet seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. And if I could ask George Hankins to lower the, lower the lights.
Did you ever play make-believe as a child? Well, this is probably not the co most common game I played growing up. I do remember some vivid experiences of imagining times was a, when I lived in a foreign country, was able to fly over my house with that, without a jet propulsion pack, or swim underwater for hours with whales. I'm not sure what these experiences are saying about me, perhaps my unconscious mind playing tricks on me or half remembering a dream. While I don't usually remember my dreams, some have stuck me, with me for years for some reason or another. Today, psychologists have a technical term for make-believe, reality, or fiction, or the ability to understand the difference between what is happening or has happened and what has not. While it would be wonderful to understand Jesus and all of his wonders, the Bible leaves a lot of questions that are unanswered about why things happen the way they do throughout our lives. We cannot see Jesus, and how can we believe in something we cannot see? How do we know that he is still present in our lives? Look at the space around you, the stained glass windows, the labor that went into building the structure and the faith that is still present from its members today. One thing that helps us discern reality or fiction is evidence based in the Bible. It should be our guidebook, especially during difficult times and when our faith is tested by difficult situations throughout life. And the main point of Christianity is sharing God's love with everyone we meet. We have just celebrated Easter, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, one of the fundamental events that sets Christianity apart from many other religions. That is, the physical form of our God, resurrection, resurrected from the dead. The heart of Christianity rests in the resurrection as a sign of eternal life and the belief in the body of Christ as three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. No other religion can claim this or has evidence to demonstrate that their God has done the same thing. Even the scriptures remind us that people have doubts. And in, reading, in, in the readings for today, doubting Thomas. But the truth is, Jesus did rise from the dead to save our souls. Today, we are going to veer slightly from our typical discussion, and we are going to take a journey through religious art to find Jesus in the areas where we might otherwise have missed him. Let us start with the stained glass in the front of the sanctuary. What do you see? Where is Jesus? What is the angel saying to us? from above the rear das. Is there a figure of Jesus depicted in the artwork? I don't see one. There we go. Now let's take a closer look at the window. I see candles and a cross. There are three crosses here on the left-hand side. Those represent crosses of crucifixion. The light represents Jesus as the light of the world. And the crosses represent the sacrifice that Jesus made for everyone to save all. When I start to doubt the presence of Jesus in my life, 
I return to the Bible and read a few passages and remember that we have been given the great gift of history, reflection, and faith through the years. The, key, the thing that keeps me going in my faith journey is the promise of eternal salvation, knowing that one day we will be re reunited with our Creator and with our loved ones. It is important to me to know that our life doesn't end when we die, but continues on for eternity. This is something that is still hard for me to understand and why God doesn't save everyone if that is ultimately the goal for all souls to go to heaven after death. It is still something I'm struggling with in my own faith journey. During this week, I challenge you to seek out places in your life where Jesus exists but where it is difficult to see him. This could be a broken relationship, a disagreement with a neighbor, friend, or colleague, or perhaps the unexpected death or illness of a loved one. You may be wondering why bad things happen to good people. Jesus reminds us that he doesn't guarantee that we won't have suffering in this life. But if we put our faith and trust in him, all will be well. Amen. Please stand if you're able and join in singing hymn number 377. I want to walk as a child of light. Hymn number 377. Please remain standing as we 
say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And could I ask now if someone could please go down and um, are, are the Sunday school children up? Okay, thank you. Let us now take our, our, a moment for our tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Dear God, we are grateful for the gifts of this congregation, for the gift of time, talent, and treasure that helps this congregation grow stronger in faith every single day and connects to the community that needs to know you and love you. Amen. And now could I please have the deacons come forward for uh, communion? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Hear the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. the body of Christ. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me.
blood of Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and these your gifts of bread and cup, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be a communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Amen. And now we come to a time of uh, prayers of the, of the people. Please join me in the intercessory prayer as well as followed by the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, because we are not strong enough to pray as we should, you provide Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit to intercede for us in power. In this confidence, we ask you to accept our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For your church in every place, that we may worship and serve you faithfully. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. For leaders and people in every land, that they may know your way and do your will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. For justice throughout the world, that there may be peace and plenty for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. For the earth you have made, that it may flourish in beauty and show your glory. For all those who hunger and thirst, that they may be filled with good things. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. For those who are ill or close to death, that they may your, lo, know your loving care. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We especially pray this morning for Lori Kilmer's mother and stepmom, who are both recuperating. Also, prayers for Brad McClellan in the choir, is having uh, surgery on his shoulder this coming Tuesday. Prayers for Randy and for his recovery newly diagnosed with lung cancer. Prayers for Nancy Mason as she will tr transition into assisted living at the uh, promenade in Middletown shortly. And also prayers for William Hankins, uh, George Hankins' brother, is that right? Mm -hmm. Who recently recovered from a from a stroke. We also remember uh, the family of uh, David Kingsley, uh, whose daughter Kathleen Kingsley's memorial service was here yesterday in the sanctuary, and the rose on the, the lectionary up here is in remembrance of Kathleen. We also pray for this congregation as we move forward. We pray for the PNC, that they will be guided by your direction as we search for a new pastor. We pray for those who are ill, those who are suffering loss, job loss, or loss of a loved one. We pray for springtime. We pray that uh, signs of growth and, and newness are all around us and we're grateful for those signs. And now let us pray the prayer, perfect prayer that God has taught us. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Please stand if you're able and join in our closing hymn, hymn number 268, Crown Him with Many Crowns, hymn 268. now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and among you as you travel out into the world to do God's work. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>